It's uh, three videos on uh, forests in Norway. A new discovery made in this vault by archipelago has revealed that prehistoric Norway was a year-round sauna, and may have been partly responsible for one of the most radical shifts in the Earth's climate within the past 400 million years. As researchers from Cardiff University discovered, this part of Norway contains swaths of ancient fossil forests. But the trees found in Svalbard, which is situated in the Arctic Ocean, are not pine trees, but are actually the remains of tropical forests. According to their paper in Geology, these fossils have now been dated to 380 million years ago. Tropical come as a bit of a surprise, but we can thank continental drift for that. 380 million years ago, during the late Devonian period, what would become Norway was situated right around the equator, allowing lush flora to take root. The area was dominated by lycopod trees, which could reach heights of about 12 feet. And this newly found flora may help explain an ancient mystery. During the Devonian period, it is widely believed that there was a huge drop in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, from 15 times the present amount to something approaching current levels, explained co-author Chris Berry, of Cardiff University's School of Earth and Ocean Science, in a statement. Of course, no one knew why this change occurred, but many guess it had to do with a sudden increase in plant size. The evolution of tree-sized vegetation is the most likely cause of this dramatic drop in carbon dioxide because the plants were absorbing carbon dioxide through photosynthesis to build their tissues, and also through the process of forming soils, said Berry. As carbon dioxide levels plummeted, the temperatures of the Earth dropped too, to levels close to what we have today. And plants at the equator probably contributed the most, thanks to the high temperatures and rainfall levels of the region, plants like those fossilized in Svalbard. These fossils now lend weight to the idea that an evolution in plant size changed the atmosphere. These fossil forests shows us what the vegetation and landscape were like on the equator 380 million years ago, as the first trees were beginning to appear on the earth, said Berry. Interestingly, Svalbard, the keeper of these ancient tree remains, also hosts the Global Seed Vault. The vault is a secure, underground, frozen seed bank, meant to provide a safety net in case a global crisis leads to a sudden loss of plant diversity. It's amazing that we've uncovered one of the very first forests in the very place that is now being used to preserve the Earth's plant diversity, said Berry. of really blonde, uh, really boring blonde people who are also lumberjacks <laughs> suffice for that. I like how they don't uh, talk about uh, galactic cosmic rays or, uh, you know, the uh, the dramatic different, the different ice houses in between, you know, uh, 380, 400 and now as she just casually says, well, the temperatures were different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then um, that's interesting about the plant height. I think um, she doesn't really talk about the... Um, alongside the you know the changes in uh, GCRs and ice houses and greenhouses um, I think I saw this one in there about you know there was a lot of uh, volcanic activity around those time periods related to the shifting of those continental plates uh, and I think uh, that probably has more of a well I, I'm not a scientist I don't really know but. well today's scientists would tell you that some 380 million years ago, around the equator, there was this tropical forest that was densely packed with these 12-foot tall trees. Now, these trees had flared trunks. As you can see here, it would remind someone of a coconut tree or a palm tree, the way that it looks on the bottom. But 
they had curved tops, as you can see on the right, and branches of needle leaves. So these were all around the area, around the equator, 380 million years ago, is what they're stating. What's interesting is in a place one would not expect to find this, they have. In Arctic Norway. And this is way up there in the northern hemisphere. Not only did they discover this, but they're dating this as, as being one of the Earth's oldest forests that they have ever discovered. And that the disappearance of all these led to the dramatic drop in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels from back in that time as they can trace them throughout different periods. Now, I thought it was pretty interesting that this is an area that most people think in their mind is full of ice and snow, and that's it. People think of Greenland, all the ice that covers all these places. They think it's just always been that way. The reality is there are a lot of things that are buried underneath that snow. And I believe a lot of secrets lie hidden there as well. Our history, like this, up in Arctic Norway, what's sitting everywhere else? What's sitting down in Antarctica? A lot. And they know it. And I just wanted to put this out there to kind of open the minds of some people out there that think that, you know, there's nothing but barren ice wastelands up there and it's always been that way. It's a lot of methane and it's also not a secret. It's just, uh, yeah, it's because your media talks to you like you're a five-year-old or a retarded dog. And that's why your brain has to process things that way where you have to, it's a mystery that we don't know these things. It's just, uh, you lie, you lie to every day. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Sunny and blue skies. It's been three cold days with lots of rain. Now I'm going to my second hike to the north of Oslo. I'm going to take a tram that will take me to the northern edge of the city from where I will hike up north to the forest and lake area. It's supposed to be very beautiful. brings the music of the south to uh to put them to Norway. The soundtrack says the south could look like this, but it doesn't. <laughs> The soundtrack gives the message that the South had the opportunity. The South of the United States had the opportunity to, to look as like 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 uh, the urban planning of, of Norway, but they chose not to. <clears throat> from Grunerlokke, which is uh, Greenwich Village, Foslo. Took me about 30 minutes to get to a place called Kielsas, which is northern edge of the city. It's a neighborhood. And uh, people were extremely nice. I asked one person where to get off, and another five volunteered explaining to me uh, all the way until I needed to get off the train. So that was very nice. Right now I'm more on like a dirt road, but eventually I should get off and get on, on a trail. So one thing I wanted to mention is the cost of public transportation in Norway is pretty high. My tram ride was more than $4. And that's kind of minimum ticket for zone one because there is zones one, two, three, four, I think. 
and zone one is the cheapest. So, and it was 32 kronas, which is more than eight, uh, more than four dollars. Weather is very nice. It's a little chilly and windy, but it's clear and uh, everything is so green and the sky is so blue. So, I'm happy. to the cabin field bunk about 10 kilometers uh, from the point where I started cabin looks very nice two floors bunch of other buildings around I am um, they all locked so nobody's here so I, I'm gonna take a break here just rest a little maybe eat something and then I will uh, move north looking for a site for my overnight camp the camp was a lot of walking uh, it was not easy a lot of ground here is uh, very wet and it's also a lot of this uh, trail was rock on one side and river on the other side so I was pretty tired uh, I actually went significantly farther than I expected but this is pretty nice a little uneven but uh, that's fine and I'm cooking dinner for myself and then I will just relax and enjoy this beautiful forest it's magic I like his production quality it's like I'm gonna just you know set up this tripod do a little action sequence show them I'm, I'm searching and what I'm looking Anyway.